Welcome back to another episode of Backstage with Next Stage. I'm your host, Candace Rawls. I'm also the marketing manager here, and I'm joined by the lovely Janet Irvin, who is our chief marketing officer, as well as Helen Hope Kimbrough, who is our director of community engagement. And today we are discussing how companies can find genuine ways to observe celebrations. Quick backstory on how this episode came about. I was on social media and I saw this post about Walmart and their Juneteenth ice cream, which was a swirled red velvet and cheesecake flavor. So there was a woman that was shopping in the store and she saw the ice cream and she took a photo of it and she uploaded it to her social media pages and then it went viral. So since that photo has gone viral, Walmart has been receiving a lot of backlash and they've apologized and said that they would remove the ice cream. So let's start off with what is the definition of Juneteenth? So Juneteenth is a holiday that's origin stemmed from 1865, when the last enslaved African-Americans in Galveston, Texas were officially told that the Civil War was over and that they were free. So Juneteenth became the nation's 12th federal holiday in 2021 when President Joe Biden signed a law to mark Juneteenth as a holiday. And I did just wanna end up with this quote um, from Bridge, which is a company that is focusing on improving DEI and inclusion in business. And it was included in a letter that they wrote to Walmart executives on May 23rd. And it said that, Juneteenth marks a very dark and devastating period in American history. So now I want to pose our first question to the both of you. Um, when did you first learn about Juneteenth? Well, I'll start. I'll say for me, um, I was in my early 20s. I was hanging out with my friends at a house party and we were playing a card game. And I think the game was taboo, but, uh, but don't quote me on it. Um, but it was um, in that game, they provide you with clues. And so a friend of mine was my partner and he was providing me with clues, but I could not get the answer to this. And so when the buzzer or the timer went off, then he said, Helen, it was Juneteenth. And I looked at him and I said, what is Juneteenth? And he says, you don't know what Juneteenth is? And I was embarrassed. I was ashamed because I didn't know. And I, I literally didn't know that part of my history, which is um, also reminds me of like the erasure of history um, because um, I had never been explained to me. It had just never come into my wheelhouse until that evening. And so from that point on, I started to learn more about it. Um, and so um, when, when was your first time, Janet? I mean, even later than that, Helen, I'm ashamed to say um, that I didn't know anything about it until probably 2019, 2020, when I had friends on social media who were starting to celebrate in their own communities or churches um, and just had no idea. It had never been taught. I didn't I didn't know about it. So um, same, just the erasure of it and, and just not even knowing it was a thing. And then of course it feels like um, it came to kind of prominence really quickly after that. Like I saw it 2019, 2020, and then in 2021, it became the federal holiday. So uh, just interesting how that evolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same for me. I didn't learn about it until 2021 when it became a uh, you know, federal holiday. And I didn't even know like how people were celebrating it. I had to like Google it. That's when I started researching, but it's really interesting. Like Helen, how you were saying how it didn't come into, you know, my wheelhouse until 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what about this um, Walmart fiasco was inauthentic? Well, I'm trying to see where do we start with this, right? Um, because um, it's one of those areas where Juneteenth is now a national holiday and now people wanna make a profit off of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where it becomes inauthentic because it's one of those areas where, you know, did you incorporate community voice in this? Did you do some test marketing in this? 
Um, did you have people with lived experience who knew about Juneteenth and could assist you in this area? Um, just so many um, missed opportunities that I think they could have delved in further and deepened their knowledge around Juneteenth. Um, so I think that's where that experience came from. Yeah, I agree. Even, um, you know, like some consumer focus groups too, that, that could have been, you know, some outside voices that could have been helpful as well. And I know we've talked a lot before about the belief-driven buyer. Um, how do organizations engage in cost-driven marketing in a way that is authentic? Now, I feel like we need to, I mean, I don't even feel like we need to dust off the soapbox because we get on it so often, Helen. Yes. Uh, we're doing yeah work. I mean, we talked about this last year on the blog, and we'll link that um, in relation to, to Pride Month and how companies are kind of rainbow washing, you know, now that Pride Month is more of a celebrated holiday. And so I think the tension comes in because we've talked about belief-driven buyers before, and it's the idea that younger generations, all generations, but especially like millennials and Gen Z, um, expect their brands to engage with values and they expect their brands to uh, kind of live um, in that social forefront. They expect their brands to engage. And so I think um, there can be a tension there for companies because they need to engage, but if it's done inauthentically and it's done without the connection to community and in relation to their own values, um, it really rings, it can ring kind of hollow. If it's done well, it's great. If it's done poorly, then it's going to, you know, backlash instead. Um, so I think there's some real consideration that companies need to do as they start engaging in this because it's powerful, right? Like brands who can cultivate that in a good way in an authentic way are going to really reap some brand loyalty and engagement um, with their bases. And this goes for nonprofits too. Like it's just as true for social good organizations as it is, I think, for brands. Um, but again, the ones, the ones who don't do that well are going to get some backlash for that. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's a trust-based in ingredient to making certain that um, the organization is a trusted source. Mm -hmm. um, what has their history showed or, or revealed? Um, is that why the, that post went viral? I mean, is it something in Walmart's past that appeared inauthentic just because of a historical component? And so I think that's also true in nature when we're talking about brand and cause marketing. Um, looking at the source and how intentional um, and that branding can be for um, companies as well. Helen, that's a great point because I think this woman, and I haven't dug into her social media, but um, she is a belief-driven buyer. So, mm -hmm. you know, these buyers are coming into your stores and your spaces and your nonprofits. And as they see things, you know, as that rings true or not, they're going to put it out there. Um, you know, for good or bad. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Yeah, things have definitely changed a lot. So the 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 buyers have a lot of control and say so, especially because of social media. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that companies can find genuine, responsible, and respectful ways to observe celebrations like Juneteenth? Okay, um, I would say there is a learning component. Um, just you know, become knowledgeable, learn about the time period or learn about um, the pain um, that that time period caused. Um, do the internal work first before trying to do some external branding later. It's okay to take that moment to really entrench yourself in information and then taking the secondary steps to follow up thereafter. Mm -hmm. And I would say a couple things. First is that it is not necessary for every brand or organization to engage in every single holiday or uh, piece of news. So I think you have to really weigh for yourself whether you do have the track record and authenticity in that. It's okay to sit some out. You know, like it, it doesn't mean you're not um, supportive or authentic to those causes. Sometimes it's best just to like take a pause and think about it. Um, the second thing I would say is we talk about this a lot, but build some partnerships. 
you know, this is where we talk a lot about being at the intersection of things, mm -hmm. um, how nonprofits and brands can partner together. Um, I just think about, you know, that, that the Walmart ice cream, but other things I've seen too, you know, with, with Juneteenth or Pride or other celebrations, um, how much more powerful could that have been if they had partnered with a black owned ice cream brand that was already sold in their store? Mm -hmm. um, or if they had partnered with a nonprofit who could help them vet those ideas and, and um, give them some trusted advice about how to um, do that responsibly and, and authentically. Um, I think we build real um, knowledge, Helen, to your point, learning, but also um, authenticity just by doing it in partnership with each other instead of trying to go solo. Um, you know, high tides make all boats rise. I mean, I think partnerships only make everyone stronger. Yeah, I agree. Good point, Janet. I like that. Um, and then I guess the other part for me in terms of deepening your impact is I mean, there are already things that you can do internally by creating voice inside of your own company, um, inviting people to the table as well, um, building a pipeline of um, people internally in your organization so that there are advancement opportunities so that those people can really be a part of decision making opportunities. So I think there are so many different ways for us to kind of look at this and, and approach it. But again, it really does come down to uh, authentic ways of doing so. Yes. No, this has definitely been a great conversation. And I appreciate, you know, the tips that you've shared and just how companies can and organizations can be authentic when it comes to observing these celebrations. Um, and I'm sure our audience would agree they found some helpful tips today. Um, if you would like some more information, you can always just make sure you check out our latest blog post on nextstage-consulting.com. And until next time, we hope that you continue to make an impact and keep striving to make a, the world a better place than you found it. Bye.